Hey, it's about time you showed up. You stay outside and keep your eyes open. I'm going in alone. Well, come and see you some more. Howdy, Bill. What's your pleasure? Rusty Bradford. It's not a pleasure. Spread word around the valley that unless I leave by sundown, he's going to drive me out. I'm going to give him a chance to make his bluff good. I know he comes in here every afternoon. Where is he? I'm one and all of you. Who's doing the shooting? Billy Carson, and he's mighty anxious to meet you. But if I were you, Bradford, I wouldn't meet him except on your own ground. Why, he's the fastest gun hand I've ever seen. He's all primed for you. From what Barlow said, I didn't think he'd stay to face me. I'm getting out of here. Well, I don't blame you, but how's Barlow going to take it? He'll understand. The next time I shoot... Wallace was standing by that door. Where is he? You've said that the valley wasn't big enough for the two of us. Well, you're right. It isn't. What are you going to do? Kill me without giving me a chance? If you had to drop on me, would you give me a chance? Sure I would. I did. I'd give you till sundown to leave the valley. I thought you'd run like the others. And if I had, you'd have been disappointed. In what way? In order to collect from Barlow and Taylor, you had to kill me. You were in their way. They hired me to remove you. It would have been a straight shooting game. Nothing crooked. Gunmen like you never give anybody an even break. But I'm going to give you one, Bradford. How? Back up. I'm going to give you the worst beating you ever had. Then I'm going to run you out of the valley.
Billy, we got to get riding. Bart and his killers are headed here. Uh, Bradford, is he dead? Yeah. I gave him an even break, but he had a gun hidden on him. That ought to clear me of any charges. It will if we get out of here before Barlow and his men show up. Now, we got to hurry. Come on. Stay where you are, Carson. Put your hands up. You're just in time, Barlow. Take your friend back to town. So you killed Bradford, huh? Yeah. I was lucky enough to do it. Why? Well, if you think being hung is lucky, you are. And I've got a rope you can stretch. You know, Barlow, you and Taylor have tried to get me for a long time. And this time we're going to succeed. We'll let the court decide that. Trials cost money. And so does rope. Carson, you've caused us a lot of trouble. I'm going to save the county the expense. Oh! You know, uh, he talks too much. Yeah, he won't now. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, there's Barrow's men. Shall we stay here and fight them? No, we'd only be looking for trouble. Come on. but the window came down and knocked me cold. Bradford's in there dead. Seem like anybody's following us, Fuzz. Uh, I guess they figured we had too much of a start. You've got another guess coming. Look over there. Now, where in tarnation you suppose they're going? They can't be following us. Looks like about a half of them. They're heading towards the eastern end of the valley. Where do you suppose the rest of them are? Could be covering the other entrance. What for? Make sure I didn't get out of here. You know. Uh... By keeping us on the run, Barlow's crowd's gonna have things pretty much their own way. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna be kept on the run. <laughs> the doctor told me that running was bad for my constitution, too. Say, Fuzz. Yeah? Did Barlow get a good look at you before you conked him on the head? See me? Yeah. <laughs> I should say not. He never even knew what hit him. That's good. That'll keep you in the clear. Yeah, but I don't want to be in the clear. I'm a fighting man from way back, and I'm sticking right with you. You don't want to go to jail, do you? Jail? Yeah. If Barlow and Taylor were strong enough to take over this valley, they wouldn't have had to hire Bradford to try to kill me. Well, the way things turned out, they can turn their gunslingers loose on me now and claim they're upholding the law. I'll fix that. I'll turn myself in. That's right. We know that Judge Ryan's on the level. Well, if he wasn't, Mark Clark wouldn't be marrying him. Now, Fuzz, I'm going on into town alone. You've got other things to do. Uh, what, for example? Well, you can go to the Circle C and tell Ma and Pat what happened. Then you can stake out that gold claim of ours and red shirt, you understand? Right. Come on. Don't waste no words. 
Oh, no, you don't. Now scat, you young whippersnappers. Clear out and go to work. Don't you like being serenaded, Ma? You scallywags don't even know the meaning of the word. Ah, oh, Ma. Now, when I was a young girl, things were different. I can remember the moonlight, soft music, romantic young men. Not three cowhands shouting in the broad daylight and trying to steal pies. Scat! Get out on the north range and relieve the other boys. Yes, Ma. Come on, boys. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Now, you fellas do as I told you. Taylor. Is uh, Billy Carson around? I haven't laid eyes on him all day. Oh, I thought it might be Billy. Seems like we're both looking for him, Pat. He promised to drop in for dinner. Well, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Usually Billy doesn't disappoint his friends. Well, from now on, he's going to have very few friends to disappoint in Wolf Valley. Hey, what are you up to, Taylor? That food sure smells good in there, Ma. The boys have the same kind of food in the shack. If you're hungry, they'll feed you when they get in. Well, that's right nice of you. What's this about, Billy? I'm really anxious to get a hold of him, Ma. Why? He murdered Rusty Bradford a little while ago. Fiddlesticks. Billy Carson never murdered anybody. Has the sheriff been notified? Oh, that would take too much time and give Carson the chance to get away. But we have our men scouring the valley. Kind of taking things into your own hands, aren't you? No, just enforcing the law. Ma, something must be wrong. Billy wouldn't... Careful. There's no need to fret. Barlow, see that Billy gets a fair trial. You're right. You can depend on us. I'm sure I can. I'd ask you to eat with us, but I know you're in a hurry to get away. Well, thanks a lot, Ma. Some other time. Oh, yes. Hitch up the buckboard, Pat. Where are we going? Into town. The sheriff and Judge Ryan have got to do something about this. But you said... Never mind what I said. Hurry, child. Let anybody out of here. What if somebody tries to get in? Let anybody through but Carson. If he shows up, shoot him down. Right.
them horses. Let go of them horses or start praying. Take it easy, Ma. Well, that's one on Ma. <laughs> What are you doing with that gun? Now, don't get excited, Ma. Hmm. How long since this gun been used? I ain't had no occasion to use it for years till now. Well, next time you feel rambunctious, you better make sure the shells ain't been fired. Now, turn that rig around and head for the ranch. No man can tell me where to go or what I can do. Orders are no one leaves the Circle C. Who gave those orders? Barlow and Taylor. They're running things in the valley from now on. Why, those... Those better do what he says. Right now, I can't do nothing, but I'm warning you. The Maverick ain't living that can corral me on my own spread. on my own place. Why, when your father was alive, he never even told me to do that. For over a year now, Barlow and Taylor pull the wool over my eyes with their slick ways and oily talk. You're not the only one they fooled, Ma, so don't feel too badly. I've been stupid, child. Awfully stupid. Billy was the only one who realized what was happening. When they took over the general store, he tried to warn us, but we wouldn't listen. Now they think they're running Wolf Valley. Well, maybe they are. But they ain't running the Circle C. They'll find out what it means to tangle with a rip-snorting, gun-toting gal. When I get through with them, they'll find out that I know how to handle mangy coyotes. Getting mad isn't going to stop them. And we've got to help Billy. At last, we got a use for that newfangled telephone. Call the sheriff. No, wait. Call Judge Ryan. Wait. I'm dealing with no underlings. Call the governor. Hear that. I'll do my own talking. The governor listened to me. I'll have him send the militia, and I'll lead them right up to Barlow's store. I'll run those two men out of town so fast they won't know what struck them. I'll show them Wolf Valley's a decent place to live. Uh, I don't hear nothing. No sounds. Telephone's dead. Load that. We're going to town if we have to shoot our way through fire and brimstone. I'll have no empty gun this time. The next man gets in my way is going to stop the lead. But we can't fight Barlow and the others. Who said we can't? I fought redskins and outlaws clear across this country. You load that gun. <laughs> You might as well shoot me or scare me to death, Ma. Where's Billy? He's on his way to town. Don't lie to me, Fuzzy Jones. Uh, I ain't a lion. Billy's in the jam. He's gone in to give himself up so there won't be a murder charge against him. You see, he figures that Judge Ryan ain't a borrow man, and he'll get a fair trial. Very smart. Ma forgets how strong she is when she gets excited. Fiddlesticks. I didn't hurt him. That was just a little love pat. Hey, love pat. The kind you give Judge Ryan? 
Now, Fuzzy, you know I love you just as much as I do the dear old judge. As a matter uh, of fact... Hold it, hold it, Margaret. I remember. I ain't a marrying man. I'm... Maybe you'll change your mind when you taste them vittles that's waiting to be eaten. <laughs> yeah, I have my dudes. I... Oh... County non station, Judge James Ryan presiding. Now, uh, before we go into the matter of the state against William Carson, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. When I woke up this morning, I found this letter on the floor of my room. It was snuck under my door during the night. <laughs> Let me see it, Jimmy. Listen, wait a minute, Ma. This don't concern you. Anything that concerns you concerns me. Give me that letter, Jimmy. Ma. This is the United States Court of Justice. And we've got to be dignified. What female's trying to steal you away from me? <laughs> now look, Ma, will you please go on, get out there. You're bothering me. The letter, Judge. What's it about? Oh, that's right, the letter. Yeah, the letter. Uh, some dirty, low-down polecat threatened my life if I didn't convict Billy Carson. But they didn't have nerve enough to sign it. Buddy Jones, come up here. Now, boy, you don't think that I wrote well, that. Of course I don't. But we've got to be ready for anything that happens. The judge has got to be protected. And you and me are just the ones who can do it. Hey, wait a minute. Lay that pistol down, Ma. Now, I don't need no bodyguard. I can take care of myself. Maybe you can, and maybe you can't. Don't be stubborn. Get on with what you were going to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I won't give you no argument. Uh, an attempt was made on the prisoner's life when he was fetched into court. And the feller that was going to kill him was killed himself. Yeah, maybe somebody else out here would like to place a murder charge against Carson. Now's the time to do it, if any of you have the nerve. Just a minute. Who in tarnation is running this court? You are, Judge. We're only helping. Look, this is my court. And I have run it my way for years. And I don't want another word out of either one of you. Do you understand? Well, there's no use in you getting excited. Shut up! Who's this? Who's this? And that goes for you out there, too. Listen, I do. Whoop. Give me my cuff there. Would you mind? <laughs> Much right. I'm surprised at you losing your temper like this, Jimmy, dear. Don't Jimmy dare me, because I won't have it. Now, James, you always liked me to call you Jimmy. Well, sure you did, because I've heard you tell her yourself. <laughs> Shut up! Now, look. One more word out of either one of you, and I'm going to throw you in jail for contempt of court. Get it heard? Now we'll get on to business. Uh, William Carson, will you please stand up? You are charged with murder and one, uh, uh, Rusty Bradford. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Certainly he's not guilty. Any fool knows that. Look, I'm trying to be very cool and calm and collective, uh, I see. You better have, or your indigestion will kick up and slap you in the face. <laughs> Now look, I am always considered a very reasonable man. 
but I'm warning you. Another word out of either one of you, and you'll be cutting paper dolls for the next year. Oh, Where was we? I I pleaded not guilty, Your Honor. I, oh, there you are. Oh, that's right. Yeah, thanks. Just sit down there. All right, now we'll hear from complainant. That's you, Barlow. Come on, get up here. Now, raise your right hand. You saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, South got? I do. Well, you signed the complaint. What has it got to say? Billy Carson here murdered Rusty Bradford. Were you present when the shooting took place? No, I wasn't. Then how do you know so much about it? Yeah, how do you Just know? Just a minute, both of you. Now, I told you two what was going to happen. I'm acting as Billy's lawyer. Uh, me too, so answer the question, if you can. Your Honor, Bradford told me that Carson was gunning for him. Well, uh, I hear it the other way around. Did anybody else hear him say that? Well, I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, without substantiation, I cannot accept your testimony as evidence. Your Honor. Yes? There must be several people in this room that heard Rusty Bradford threaten to kill Billy on sight. We'll soon find out. Uh, anybody here who heard uh, Bradford threaten Carson's life, please stand up. Make sure you remember every one of them. <laughs> Seems to be a lot of folks disagree with you, Barlow. Are there uh, any more witnesses? Huh? That'll be all, Barlow. That's all. Uh, prisoner, please stand and face the bar, please. In view of the peculiar circumstances of this case and the lack of evidence, the murder charge against William Carson is dismissed. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy! Jimmy! Where am I? What, what, what happened to me? I only kissed you. It, you what? <laughs> Am I, uh, am I free to leave now, Your Honor? No, you're not. I'm going to sentence you to 30 days in jail for disturbing the peace. Disturbing the peace? That's right. Lock him up, Sheriff. All right, court's adjourned. Hey! You can't do that to Billy. Oh, no? No! Well, I can do more than that. Right. I can toss you in there with him. James, what? what is the meaning of this? Oh, that's the only thing I could do. Why, to save your own life? To save Billy. Ah, now look, he'll be safe for 30 days, and then things may quiet down. It's pretty tough on Billy, though. Fiddlesticks. James, darling, yes. you're a smarter man than I thought. I'm proud of you. Are you? Somehow, I don't figure things are going to figure out the way they're figured. Oh, don't be a killjoy. Yeah. Well, come on, let's get out of here, Mom. Well, things couldn't have worked out any better. We've got 30 days to get control of everything in the valley. Are the men all set? Yeah. Then turn them loose. Let's get some action.
right, Sheriff. Come on in. Uh, I'm afraid I made a terrible mistake, Billy. Uh, maybe so, Judge. But you did what you thought best at the time. Mm -hmm. I told Billy that you and me figured it was him they were after. Now they have planned this trouble for a long time. Bound to come to a head sooner or later. Well, is there anything you can do about it? I can try. We'll back any play you make by making you a deputy sheriff. Okay, Sheriff, I'll get a hold of Fuzzy and start the ball rolling. Well, I'll keep it quiet as long as I can that you're out of jail. Good, that'll help. Hey. Oh, uh, <laughs> say, Judge. Hey. Mind if I have my gun? Oh, yeah, that's right. You may need that. This time might need it. Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much, sir. Thank Goodbye. to see you. How'd you get out of jail? Well, the judge guessed wrong, Fuzz, so he turned me loose. I was again for putting you in there in the first place. If they could listen to me, we wouldn't be in the mess we are now. Yeah, everybody makes mistakes. Maybe we can straighten it out. Let's get on over to the claim and talk it over. Uh, Billy, we ain't got no claim. What? We haven't got a claim? No, they jumped it a week ago. What about the gold dust we had hidden there? I didn't even have time to get that out. They didn't miss a trick, did they? No. What about my clock in the Circle C? Oh, uh, there's talk of Barlow's going to take her ranch over. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Come on. I don't know how I let you talk me into taking the money from my herd before I delivered them. Well, having the cattle stolen was a tough break. And I wouldn't press you for the return of the money ordinarily. But we've had losses like the rest of you. I wonder. Ma, sometimes I'm convinced you mistrust me. I do. It wouldn't surprise me a bit if you were responsible for my cattle disappearing. Well, if you feel that way about it, I'm a fool for trying to help you. Stop quibbling, Barlow. You know you're not helping me or anybody else. You're just feathering your own nest. All right, maybe I am. Either return the cash advanced or deliver the cattle by sundown tomorrow. And if I don't, what? We'll take over the Circle C. We just missed Barlow. Uh, maybe it's just as well. Glory be, Billy. Am I glad to see you. Hello, Ma. What did Barlow want? Come inside and I'll tell you. Mad is he knows I'd pay him if I had the money. Yeah, he's gonna talk himself into his grave yet. Say, Ma, can I borrow a couple of your men? I want them to help me get back that claim Barlow jumped. Sure, take as many as you want, and I'll go with you. Now, uh, wait a minute, Ma. sides at once. Try to keep them from getting into the shack. Well, give us time to surround them, then fire. Then we'll all let loose. All right. Now, Ma, you stay here. You keep out of it. You understand? Oh, all right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Run 
You take this in the bottle at the store tomorrow at noon. I'm not letting you throw good money after bad. <laughs> you let me worry about that. Now get a receipt for payment in full and be sure he doesn't put anything over on you. And leave quickly. Hello, Ma. What's on your mind? I brought the money you claim I owe you. Good. I had it weighed at the affairs office. It's right to the last penny. Give me a receipt. Well, Ma, I hope you understand. I understand that more than you think I do. Never mind opening that safe, Barlow. It's a stick-up. A stick-up? You ought to know better than that. Those bags are marked C and J. They belong to Fuzzy and me. So I'll be taken. Well, that gold was given to me by Ma Clark. That's right, for cattle you stole from. You can't get away with this. One yell out of me and you'd... Force me to shoot you. And I don't want to do that just yet. Not until you give back every dollar you've stolen, every ranch you've grabbed, and every head of cattle you've run off with. Nah, shooting's too easy way out for you, Barlow. I'm going to make you regret the day you ever came into this valley. You've been plenty clever. The law can't catch up to you. Maybe things are going to be different now. Think it over, Barlow. And by the way, that ship and the money you sent out in the noon stage, you needn't bother about it. It's being taken care of. I'll be seeing you, Barlow. No quarrel with the stage line. Come on. I got an order here for that money you're carrying for bottle. Let's see it. Now, you satisfied? Well, guess I am. Give me the money. Now, spank your ponies out of here. Get it. Uh, Billy ought to be waiting for us at the Circle C, and that's our next stop. Wait out here. Well, we made a good start, but we can't let up for a minute. We've got to keep hitting them where they least expect it. Oh, it won't take long to whittle them down to our size. Yeah, and I'm one of the best little whittlers you ever seen. <laughs> Barlow's offered 5000 for you, dead or alive, Billy. Hey, with a bunch of gunslingers on your trail, it's going to be tough to move around. I think I'll be able to keep out of their way all right. Now, it's up to you fellas see that nothing happens to Pat and Ma. 
Fuzzy and I are going to drop out of sight for a while. What about this? I think I'd better take it with me, Ma. Might come in handy trapping Barlow. So long. Well, where do we go from here? Over to Ricardo's house. And I'm going on into town alone. Hey, wait a minute, Billy. They'll gun you down the minute you set your foot on Main Street. Oh, no, they won't. Don't you worry about it, Fuzz. Well, then what am I supposed to do? Nothing? You're going to be plain Fuzzy Jones and plenty busy. Charo, senor, te parece puro mexicano. I will tell you with all my truth. You look like my big brother, Jose. Gracias, senor. I hope this works. Oh, I am sure it will work. But you know, you cannot sell stolen cattle in my country. We know that. The fellas I'm going out to get don't. Oh, but you be careful, senor. Don't you worry nothing, senor. I will be all right. Unless somebody gives me the two times double, eh? <laughs> When is this, senor? You back here again? Si, I'm back again. I'd still like to see senor Barlow. He ain't here. Senor Taylor will do. He ain't here either. Ah, that's too bad. You know, I've come from a long way to see him. Oh, one of them will be back here sometime. Stick around. Stick around? Stick around, senor. What that means, stick around? Wait. Wait. Si, senor, I will wait. Gracias. So sorry, senor, but don't you worry nothing. I'll be very glad to pay for the cost to fix it. Forget it. Now, Jones, get out of here. Hey, your man accused me of stealing back. Amigo, amigo, I think you better go before you get in more trouble, eh? Come on, I will go with you. My little friend, you should not fight two fellas, you know. It's a tough job to pick two big guys like that. Who is that? Do you know? Yeah. That's the fellow around here yesterday looking for you. All right, get the place cleaned up. That's fine, Fudge. You timed it perfectly. Everything is all set. Barley's men can't do a thing without us knowing it. Well, the next few minutes and tell the story. All right, my amigo. I'll see you later, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I've been looking for your new place and found you everywhere, right? Ah, the little fellow is a great fighter, no? He can lick his own heavy. But he's very dumb, senor. I understand you want to see me. Senor, if you are Senor Barlow, yes. Come in the office. Gracias, Senor. Gracias. Amigo. Sit down. Uh, I do not want to sit down. I've waited a long time to see your Senor Barlow. I want to talk to you. Uh, just who are you? Who I am? Jose Gonzalez, Senor, from Mexico. And you are... Uh, you are Senor Taylor, no? Yeah, that's right. Cigarette? No. You? Oh, thanks. Ah, 
Gracias, senor. I am uh, so, how you say, so happy to meet two so clever men. What makes you think we're so clever? It is my business to know, senor. That is the way I make my pesos. What do you mean? For a long time now, me and my amigos below the border know what you are doing. Just uh, what are we doing? <laughs> Here. Is it necessary for me to tell you? Well, it might help. Okay. As you Americanos say, we'll get down to the brass tacks. No. Yeah. Senor Balo, you sit down. Thanks. Okay. Senors, you have many cattle with brands you do not own, no? Do not touch the gun, senor. I'm only telling you what I know. And besides, we are friends, no? Yeah. Keep on talking. Well, senors, you are strong and powerful. But this country is strong and powerful, too. The longer you keep the cattle, the more dangerous it is for you. And don't forget, you have many enemies. Should they find out all you have worked for will fail. So what? So, such kinds of cattle I buy. I do not ask the questions. And I'll pay you good price, senors. Cash, right on the barrel's head. No, senor. Perhaps you would like to talk about it, eh? I will come back later. Adios. Wait a minute. Yes? What do you say, Taylor? Well, we got a couple thousand head of prime steers. Uh, senor, a couple of thousand, how many is that? Two. A couple is two. Uh -huh. What do you pay for them? For 2,000 head cattle, I will pay $20. Make it 25 Twenty dollars a head, senor, and you deliver the cartels to the border. Is that cash in advance? Cash in advance, si, senor. I will give you now five thousand dollars of your money, senor Barlow, to make the bargain. It's a deal. Yes, Taylor, bueno. you take Wallace and Dave with you. And don't turn loose of the cattle until you get the rest of the money. You do not trust me, senor Barlow? Don't you worry, there will be no trouble. You can be sure. And later? I will be back to do more business with you. Adios. Fine. I'll be seeing you. Perhaps sooner than you expect, Senor Barlow. Adios. Somebody's coming. Bert, round up the sheriff and the boys and bring them back here. Billy will be gone, but then we'll never be able to catch him. Oh, uh, no. His horse is wearing a shoe that leaves a peculiar mark. I can follow it any place. Okay. looking stock. You sure didn't make any mistake. I'll say I didn't, but you did. Stick them up. Now get off those horses. Hurry up. Now throw those guns down. Tie them up. Oh, 
out, but I'll make sure. They're coming from the wrong direction to help you. You're not first. You can take these two back into town while I pay Barlow a visit. Good luck, Billy. Took us a long time to get the deadwood on him, but we've sure got it now. Mexican you made a deal with was Carson. He and the sheriff's posse have grabbed the steers. What about Taylor and Dave? They got them too, and now Carson's on his way here to grab you. Wallace, we've got to stop him. I'll tell you what you do. When he gets in town... Are you looking for me, Carson? Yeah. I come to arrest you, Barlow. Well, you'll have to come and get me. That won't be too hard. deed to your place, Jimmy. <laughs> and here, you can go back to your ranch anytime you're mine to, Chuck. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. That's all right, boys. That's all right. <laughs> well, I reckon that takes care of everything. I uh, know it don't. Not by a jug full. Uh, Grab him, Sheriff. Don't you lay a hand on him. Grab her, too. That's your job, bud. All right, give me them handcuffs. Oh, what's going on here? Show you. Now, now, there's your prisoners, Sheriff, and here's the authority. Take him right over the parson. He's waiting to marry him. Uh, man, <laughs> lead the way, Fuzzy. I've been trying to get him to the preacher for years. Now, <laughs> I'm Harry Cole. 